Welcome to the Fixed Ops Friday Show, where we bring you high-quality guests speaking about how to take your fixed ops department to the next level. This Car Guy Coffee production is brought to you by Fixed Ops Digital, powered by Trade Pending. Let's brew! What's going on, car guys and car gals? It's Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And it's Frelin Art, subprime hero. And the one, the only, Owen Moon! What's going on, brother? What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome you and everybody to the very first of 2024 Fixed Ops Friday. Right. We are so excited to have everybody jumping in, whether you're going to watch this on the replay or you're going to catch it live. We're telling you right now, we need you involved. So wherever it is that you are, we just happen to be in Miami. And I know Owen's up there in the cold. I'll be out there tomorrow. Literally. Yeah, coming, coming to Iowa, huh? Yeah, coming to Iowa, get to see my son. Love it. Uh, excited about that. But man, no matter where it is that you are, go ahead and get ready for a hot piping cup of some of that fixed ops brew that is going to be super, super special for you. We got a subject that we haven't really participated here on the show before, and we're excited about it because, quite frankly, I get a whole lot of mail concerning it. When the more cars you, get, the more cars you own over time, the more notices you get you even get the notices when you don't own the car anymore that happens. that's what i'm saying right hey, yeah but uh, we are excited to see everybody in here thomas ping is already up in here saying what's what up, up thomas we got jordan cox what up getting bro? things going yes that's right we are over so crew over there and we facebook got a facebook user, user saying yo yo, yo. yo what up heck yeah we're that's got to be brian <laughs> there's, there's, there's so many great shows folks fix house friday has been running now for well over a year and this show's almost two years now and this show has really brought on a lot of amazing guests, and today is no less than that. It's it's an, another amazing guest that we're excited to talk about what he does, what he's doing, and what's happening in today's market. I, I'm excited. I know Owen is. Owen was really excited when he sent me the information. Hey, this is what I got for the, for the 19th, and I was like, fantastic. So excited. There's been a shift in their company name. There's so many things that we get to talk about today and the reasons behind it. So I'm pumped up, Lou. There is. There's a lot that's shaken up and uh, we're excited about it. But Owen, what is it that you went through when considering who it is that we get the chance to kick off 2024 with? How did we come to the special guest that we have to here today? I think uh, what ends up happening a lot of times is fixed operations is such a massive, massive animal, right? There's so many different pieces of it. There's so many different profit centers. There's a lot that you can just, we could go on this show and, and talk for 24 hours and never hit the same subject twice. I've tried to be very specific with our guests and this one's no different. I think that uh, this guy has a, a lot of knowledge in, um, in this particular area. And um, I noticed that more and more OEMs are having these problems and and consumers obviously is something that they're having to deal with and i just think i think at the end of the day just to shed light to other areas of the fixed operations department is big and so i think this topic today fits right into where we're at as we're moving into 2024 and, and not only from a consumer standpoint but obviously why we're here today and that's what opportunities do we have for dealers to uh, to get better make more money and to really give their consumers that great experience when they get to the service lane and uh, i think the more we can shed light on what's actually happening in these different areas we can definitely make a difference and so yeah let's bring him on let's let's get started with this thing let's get him out here so facebook user was our friend james bernard so oh, hey james inside of the heart that you have for this incredible industry we got to go ahead and call the solutionary out here and just say solutionaries mount up so let's <laughs> welcome in the one the only steven granger hey yo brother how are hey, you guys Wow, that was a big no, intro. <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah. The cup's come in bigger sizes, we promise you. All right. You All right. Louder. We're not done. Uh, getting you pumped up about really just you being you, you being yeah. awesome, bringing a solution uh, to the market and helping out in a tremendous way. And we're just really here to make sure the whole world knows about it or at cool. least a little pocket of people that we can influence a little bit. But, uh, Stephen, where are you at? Tell us a little bit about yeah. you and uh, dealer recall solutions. Yeah, so I have been in the auto industry for, I hate to say it when I say it out loud, I feel really old, but almost 25 years now. And I got into it in like most people, I think in our space where I wasn't planning on becoming a car salesperson, but I was a recruiter, the dot-com bubble burst. I needed a job, I love cars. And specifically at that time, I was really being into Audis and my ex-wife, she's looking in the paper. That's how long ago it was. 
she was looking for jobs. We need a salesperson. And it's really a kind of a funny story because the guy that I ended up going and working for were very close friends. And he told me later, because I was telling him, like, man, I was really worried when I pulled up. He was like, bro, you pulled up in a TT and you had a resume. Like, we don't get that. <laughs> you were good. You were in. Yeah. yeah. You were, you were 100% you done, were in. Done. Yeah. And I did the car sales for about six, eight months and realized it was the hardest job on the planet. And I was not very good at it. Uh, but I still love the car business. And so try to figure out ways that I could be involved in the space and work for Auto Trader Magazine. That's again, how long ago it is, cars.com. And then I was one of the first dealer facing people at Carfax. So we handled large dealer groups for them and then worked there for 12 years. And during that time, one of my roles was best practice consultant. And that's where kind of the germ of the recall idea came from for me is when the Takata, actually it was way before Takata, it was some weird recall on Fords that they replaced the transaxle and a dealership made like four grand. And I remember we were at a Ford store in Ohio and the guy was like, can you help us figure out where we can find these? And I was like, oh, hey, maybe this is an idea. And at the time Carfax had this really very rudimentary listing site that like nobody knew about. But if you ran a Carfax report, it would put a listing up and it was just a text listing, no pictures, anything. And so we talked to him about, you could set up an alarm, what kind of cars have the recall and it'll ping you when one's listed for sale. And initially that was the vision I had for a company. And it started, the name of the company originally was called Recall Rabbit. And the idea came from that. Plus I was the digital manager at a seven store group here in Austin and it was right when Takata came out and the guy who sat next to me was the service BDC director and he kept calling people every day. Hey, Bob, um, I know you've probably seen the news about the airbag issue. We want to take care of you. We don't have thousands of airbags sitting here, but now I've talked to you, I'm going to order you one. And when it comes in, we'll get you taken care of and get you in and get it. And then fast forward, the bad part would come in. He would call somebody and be like, hey, Bob, great news. We got the airbag. I want to... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. Uh, I'll give you a call later. <laughs> and I finally, after hearing this probably 150 times, I walked over and I was like, are you telling someone that we will fix their car for free and potentially save their life if they get in an accident? And they're telling you no. And he's like, yeah, it happens all the time. And I was like, okay, there's something going on here. And then I started doing some digging and realized how big an issue recalls really are in our space and that there isn't really a good way for dealers to connect with consumers and other dealers and try and connect those dots and get people in and get them fixed. Hey dealers, Car Guy Coffee Podcast and Certified Solutionaries are honored to be part of Team BenQ. The solutions they've been brewing for you to acquire more vehicles, advertise merchandise, and manage those vehicles has made them one of the most sought after dealer partners in the market. They are 100% CGC approved. And when you visit them at VinQ.com, you'll see a whole hill of beans worth of reasons why. Team VinQ, let's brew! And so fast forward, built an initial MVP, launched that in a minimal viable product. Sorry, I forget. I'm on the techie <laughs> side and auto side of the world. Back in before 2000, 2020, sorry, uh, January 2020, I decided to quit my day job and start full time on Recall Rabbit, trying to drive business to dealerships. Not on paper the best time to do your startup, right at the start of COVID, a world pandemic. But it was actually a cool experience for us because what the tool originally did was connect dealers to help them solve recalls on used inventory, right? So if I'm a Honda store, I we would tell them all the Hondas that were sitting around them for sale that had recalls on them. And then they would connect, get them in, get them fixed. Nobody has to pay for it. It helps the dealer who's selling the car have a better um, inventory piece to sell. It was, a, it was a cool idea at the time. And we had some dealers at the time, if we go in the Wayback Machine, uh, tell us that they weren't able to be selling cars. They could service, but people were afraid they were going to die if they brought their car in to get their oil changed because Nobody knew if I touched the car and you touched the car, 
Am I going to get COVID? There were some dealers we had at the time that were like, this is literally the only way we're making money right now is by getting these cars from other dealers. These recalls. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I started digging and it, it's a really big number. And I think a lot of people are surprised. It's depending on the study you find um, anywhere between one in four and one in five cars at any time in the United States has a recall. So between Why? 55 to 60 million cars. Why do you think, so a quick question on that. Why yeah. do you think it has, I mean, grown so much? Yeah. Here's the thing. It's like, we heard about recalls. I mean, growing up, early adulthood, you got a recall here, recall there. You know, it was like, oh man, that, what they do, they use a bad part that they get, you know, it's like, now I feel like it's almost like the OEMs are like, it might not be as good of a part, but we're going to just throw it in there yeah. and we'll deal with the aftermath. What do you think changed in the philosophy to be where we're at today, where you, yeah. you got millions of vehicles that are on the road? That yeah. be- Every day, like I have Google alerts set up and I'm blown away by the number. Every day I get an alert that says 700,000 cars. And I asked, I wondered the same thing. I asked a lot of our customers, why do they think it, right? If people have been in the space for a long time. And kind of the common answer I've gotten, Owen, and I don't know how good I feel about this as a consumer, but if you think about in the way gone days, it would take forever to get a car to market, right? It may be seven, eight, 10 years from when the idea comes up and they start to work on it. And they've sped that process up. And part of what has gone by the wayside in that speeding up is the testing, right? And so unfortunately what ends up happening, this is again, what I've been told, I'm not, (laughs) this isn't the Bible, but is that we're the guinea pigs. They get the product out, not assuming they're going to be problems or knowing they're going to be problems, but that's what happens because they haven't had the rigorous testing that they may have had in the past where almost overkill on testing of vehicles. And uh, I think that's really the biggest piece that I've heard, right? Um, I think also there's so much more technology inside cars. There's just a lot of other crap to break and not work right, you know? The big one, there was a couple of years ago, we have grown beyond that initial product um, from customer interaction, customers coming to us and asking us for help. And one specific thing that kind of sparked where we are today and the change in the name of the company is uh, about four, three or four years ago, Honda had a big recall. And this is just to give you an idea of that, right? And it was on the infotainment system and just the connectedness of the car. So it was the infotainment system on the Honda Odyssey. And there was something where they had to reprogram it. And it took a machine that's like the size of my desk that they gave every Honda store one of these machines. And if you needed a second one, because you have so many bays, it was like 30 grand or something like that. And what would happen, and the the reason it was so scary to Honda and consumers is that if you did it improperly, because the infotainment system was connected to the digital dashboard, it would fry the dashboard. And then you would have a, a mileage issue on that car. All of a sudden, the mileage wouldn't be correct. And you... So so, one thing led to other things, (laughs) other issues. Yeah, yeah. So it it just shows the connectedness of everything that's going on. And if something goes wrong, they have to fix it so that it gets fixed for the whole thing. Goodness. So uh, much. The the understanding of the exposure we do get to have to our customer after the fact is a pretty important piece. Yeah. Inside of the recall, recall process. I really would wonder what would the stats look like? What are the numbers or are there any studies? Does anybody know? How many first time visits to a franchise dealer or an OEM dealer is because of? Yeah, I don't know know that number, but that's a great one. one And it's also one of the things I think that's it's a great tool for dealers. I know a lot of times there's this kind of negative perception of recalls inside the fixed ops world from the dealer space. And it's understandable because some of them are worth not very much money. It's a pain. Like you guys said, you've gotten mailers and flyers, which on one side makes me sad, but also makes me happy because hopefully we can find you and get you in. But 
if you take a step back and think about most communication from a dealer to a consumer or what a, when a consumer is dealing with the fixed op side of the dealership, right? It's a negative experience, not because of the engagement with the dealer, just because what's going on. Hey, dealers, franchise and independent, we have some great news for you and your number one sales pro. Your, your website. website. Partner with Team MXS, we have the ability to pull you out of that cookie cutter, merry-go-round, and help your website embody what it means to do business with you. From the highest quality production to the most strategic optimization, we want to help you connect better to the ever-changing market. You owe it to you and your team to at least let us do a quick and free checkup on your website. We can't wait to hear from you. Go, Go to, to teammxs.com. Back to the show. Your car, the most expensive, second most expensive thing you own is broken, right? And so you're already like, oh man, it's not working. I got to go see the dealer. You pull into the dealer and dealers have done a great job of trying to make their environments friendly and great for customers and but when you take a step back and you think about it, there's this giant overhang. There's 20 people, 40 cars. As a consumer, you're pulling in there. Oh man, and you're already worried. Like cars jacked up. I don't know what they're gonna say. I don't know if they tell me it's right or wrong. Or if the outreach you're sending is about a special or something like that, like consumers aren't really excited about coming to a car dealership to get their car fixed. If you think about the message that you send a consumer if you're messaging about recalls, it's not a message of come in we want to take money from you it's we're going to fix this for free we care about you and your family in your vehicle we want to help you it's a great opportunity to get that customer in like you said maybe not the first time but maybe it's a long time customer that hasn't come in for a while right there it's a great tool to engage your customer base even if it may not be a lot of money and there are a lot of recalls that are a lot of money but even if it's a small amount if you're using that as a tool to generate engagement with the customer you think about th that feeling that they get when they come to the dealership right i'm positive because my service advisor reached out to me because they're concerned about my family and my minivan and the airbag and i want to make sure my kids are safe right and what we found across the board with our customers is that typically when someone is messaging about recalls and that's why they come in Customer pay above and beyond that is typically from our customer base about 75% above the warranty work, right? So if somebody's the recalls a thousand bucks, what we see is typically that consumer is then spending an additional $750 with that dealership for that RO. And it's you, a you build trust. You yeah, build trust. Yeah. You something to them that they didn't even realize they get the recall because you sent the letter out, you sent the message out, you reached out to them. You they didn't get it from the manufacturer, they didn't have to find out for themselves. Yeah, you, you offered a free service to make sure that they're taking care of them and their family. Where else yeah. do they spend their money with people they trust? And they should still be doing the MPI, right? They should be still in yes. for inspection. They're still going to be like, oh, hey, I got you. Let's just go through that normal everyday yeah. process. And now that's when you do make those recommendations. They actually believe them and they say, yeah. oh, OK, this is what I need. Or the, the, the MPI is right. It's whether yeah. or not the customer believes it's worth it to them right. to fix it today. And right. if, if they're not, if they're coming in and not getting charged for that, that, that recall, maybe there's money in their pocket to take care of a couple of the things. And you're proving that with some of your data there. Yeah. It's a great opportunity. And I think even if worst case scenario, you just fix the recall, right. And it's 150 bucks. Your point is exactly right. And this is what I harp on with our customers. If you get 150 of those people in, that's 150 MPIs that now your BDC can reach out to those people. When you do talk to them, what they have in their mind is, oh, the last time I went to the dealership, they helped me. So it's a, yeah, it's a great tool for engaging customers. Especially because the, the majority, all of these customers are not going to those third parties to go get a recall handle. Yes, because they can't. They can't. Yeah. Where most of them, whether they purchased it new or they purchased it used and never established a relationship with a franchise, they are taking care of their car right. with the third parties up and down the block yeah when they get the chance to if it's presented right receive great news we have an, a fix for your vehicle we have an almost it's an upgrade for your vehicle to be optimized to work more to factory specifications just like us on our iphone how often yeah. do we get upset when we say hey there's going to be an update yeah there's an update but it's because they're fixing it's a recall issues in a sense. that are happening <laughs> 
on the phone. Is. You know what I mean? You know it is. That's where we're, we're going. And, and I think maybe just, we need to change it and call it an update. I like it. it Get rid of recall. Yeah, I like that language. I, I agree. Adjustment. I do. I agree. And Jeff said it good. Be proactive. Use proactive communication instead of reactive. Yeah. That's the whole idea of everything that we do, you, my friends. Felicia, she says yes. This is what I've been preaching to the service BDC and the advisors. Amen to that. Yeah. Just as earlier, the customer already has pain. You're 100 yeah. percent right. So before they even show up, so we what do we do? We build trust by taking away as much of that pain as possible. Yeah. Debbie Baines came what in here and said, hello, 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 hello. What's up? Thank you so much for joining us. You know, this is some really good stuff, my friends. And, and I think that everybody who's on the show watching it right now live, they all agree. They get this is to me, it should be a no-brainer. That's why it's so crazy that a business like yours, a company like yours, is like breaking ground. This is yeah. something that should have been done a long time ago. So I'm so glad that you guys are out there making this happen right now for so many dealers and for the industry and for clients. More importantly, for the people who are owning these vehicles, which are the yeah. dealer employees in a lot of cases, which are their family yeah. members, right? So it's important that we have all these types of things put in place to build more trust and makes it so simple. It's just data. It's data that we use yeah. that we send out information to be able to get them to come in and share and help. So. And let's be honest, we've had, I see some, it. Data, the other we've had some data come out recently yeah. that from 21 to 23, we've actually lost market share to the independents. Right? So we're, we're still fighting that game of convenience, yeah. of price. And so if really one of the few things that we still have in our bag that they don't is recalls. So yeah. why are dealerships not embracing it? Is it a pain in the ass to get paid? Is there, there might be few things that it's a different process than customer pay. There's probably some things there that, that are they're relevant, but yeah. at the end of the day, if I really want to grow market share to Steven's point, if I get 150 people in to fix something that I know the OEM is going to reimburse me for. I think what ends up happening in a lot of cases that, I mean, maybe not so much as we move forward here, but in the past it was like, okay, we got that fixed. Let's just get on to the next appointment where it needs to be part of a bigger strategy. Hey, let's reach out to that person. Let's give them a coupon to come in now and get a, an oil change done and maybe at a cheaper price and, and say, Hey, this is a second touch point And this is a third touch point. Yeah. And before you know it, that customer only thinks of you when it comes to yeah. that solution. Yeah. But if you just let them come in and get the recall, shake their hand, wave at them and, and they're off. You've done yourself no good in the You literally have done nothing with it. Activity breeds activity, right? And that's the whole point is activity. Keeps everyone busy, keeps everybody happy, keeps clients coming inside your place of business. We lost the market share between 21, 23. There's no doubt. We were selling cars for twice the price that they were. We were not caring about any service at all. And that's yeah. such a shame because that was such an opportunity during that time to do the complete opposite. Yeah. A lot more trust inside that and gain more market share inside the service departments, which our service departments are above beyond any to me. Most of those independents out there, they have oh, better, yeah. better, better service techs. They have everything that you can imagine. It's just the problem is that majority of them don't know how to market that. They don't know how to do those things. That's why companies yeah. like Fix Ops Digital and Dealer Recall Solutions are out there to help you guys do that. Fix Ops Digital trade pending. Trade pending. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's so important that people yeah. go out and understand. And I think that dealers, if you're watching this right now, I'm telling you, start looking at those recalls, start finding yeah. solutions for that. And reach out to Steven, have a conversation with him. I promise you, he'll be happy to give you as much information that he can to be able to help you. Yeah. Get them level. And I'm yeah. Sure. Even if you don't work with somebody like us or recall masters or the other players in the space, like Owen said a great thing, like it's a process. I can't tell you how many stores we've worked with where we send them because we can see which customers went in by their VIN when we see it at the end of the month that like we sent them in for the recall and they didn't even fix it. We know you're enjoying the show so far. We just wanted to quickly remind you about our partners at Fix Ops Digital and how they are automotive's premier service marketing and technology company. Not only proud sponsors of the Car Guy Coffee podcast, but they also serve as your dedicated point of contact for all your online service marketing related needs. Servicing dealerships throughout the U.S. and Canada, the mission is to create a better online experience for your service customers while using data intelligence to drive more fixed operations revenue. If you want to take your service marketing efforts to the next level, go to FixOpsDigital.com. Back to the show. Let's go. What are you guys doing? <laughs> like that because of their own internal process, when they get there, they don't have a way to look up the recalls or whatever that is. It's just, it's a piece of the puzzle. I mentioned I was a recruiter and I worked for 
an agency in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we were one of a giant company that had 48 locations. And we made more money at our one place than all 48 other combined. And my boss was brilliant. And he said something to me one time, because I worked on something that was, it wasn't software related. So it was a smaller dollar amount for the branch. And I always had a chip on my shoulder. And one day he pulls me aside and says, Steven, when you go to the liquor store, they don't just sell champagne, they sell chiclets. You know why they sell chiclets? Because they make money on the chiclets, right? You are the chiclets of our company. <laughs> and I'm so glad we have them because when somebody walks out with the champagne, they grab a chiclet, right? Like, and the recalls is that same piece. Maybe it isn't a, a huge home run on the recall itself, but the periphery stuff, the MPI, the great experience, the now you see what a dealership is really instead of what you think in your brain dealing with a dealership is like versus Jiffy Lube or Meineke or Firestone, whoever you pass to come to the dealership because they can't work on the recall. You can. This is a great chance for you to take that and run with that customer. The other thing that we see too is it's a great way to engage older customers and bring them back in because if you've got a five-year-old car, you're probably not going to the dealership to get your oil changed, even though... To your point, the tax probably better than the other place. I just changed my oil somewhere because I had to, and they screwed it up. I ended up taking it back to the dealership because they didn't do it right. Right? <laughs> you never have to have that worry. Because the, the and, don't have CSI scores. Then independents don't right? have to worry about what their customers think. Yeah. They just they just yeah. deal with the local manager, right? Yeah. And that's, we have, that's a whole different level. There's so yeah. much. We had one Honda store that, after seven eight months of running with us. He reached out to me and he's like, I want to thank you. I won an award and I didn't know how I won it for his region. And I was like, what are you talking about? And it was, they get, I guess there's some sort of review that they have for age of customer brands, right? Two to three years, whatever it was. And he had more than anybody else in the region in this older band. And he could not figure out where they were coming. He's like, how am I getting these eight-year-old customers? And when he started doing the digging, he was like, it's because we're messaging about recalls. They're re-engaging. We're doing a great job. We get their trade, right? There's so many periphery things that can happen with this. Just again, it's a positive message. We want to help you come on into the dealership. How many times are you looking for used, good used CPO cards, right? I, mean, I, I think of it as sales, man. Conversation creates car deals. And yeah. every bit, like the trust, the build, them, them coming back to the store, that makes them even more confident in the front side of the house, right? Where the certain yeah. So all that stuff works together. This is a team effort. And when you can have this running as an owner, and this is why owners need to think of it as more, this isn't just service. This is your business. Yeah. Yeah. This is your business. This is your and great stories. Like we have two that I can just think of on top of my head. So we work with a great store in the Chicago area and we help them message. It was not technically a recall. It was something with a transmission on a Honda that it if there was something wrong with it, Honda would replace it. And so we messaged all the customers that had this. And it was during the Thanksgiving holiday and a woman came in and it was an older, I think CRV or something. And they ended up replacing it. And she was blown away because she was like, I could have been driving. She had a big trip. She was going away on Thanksgiving to her family, a couple hundred miles away. She's like, if it would have gone out, I would have gone to a somebody, a transmission shop. They would have probably fixed it. I would have never known that it was going to be replaced at no charge to me. And the same thing happened with the same kind of recall here. I live in Austin. We have a great customer here, Honda store. We sent the message. The guy called the dealership and told them to stop sending him the message. Mm -hmm. And the guy, he's, I've gotten this message two or three times. I've taken it to a local transmission shop. They're about to repair it and replace it. And our customers are like, whoa, 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 stop. I will send a tow truck to that place, pick your car up, and we will replace the transmission at no charge. And the guy was like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, that's what this recall is. Your transmission needs to be replaced. We will replace it at no charge. And he did. And the guy's like, I can only imagine. That's the thing. You think about that. Think about the next time that guy talks to somebody who says, I'm looking for a car. He's, he is loyal for life. Yes. Loyal for life. Yeah. But he started from a perspective. This is, you guys are trying to trick me. You're trying right. to get me in. Which, right? which is the essentially market. what it is that we're trying to break down yeah. is a giant wall of mistrust that the customer has with the 
big bad car dealer that's inside of our community and trying to get us for every dollar for their big beautiful buildings or their big yeah. beautiful displays the customer doesn't recognize that all of that awesomeness is for them and it yeah. is them and that they get that with the product that they purchased from the dealership and if yeah. it's approached properly then the customers should recognize this as great news and like we were saying earlier as the update because uh, to your chiclet point the product placement inside of your local convenience store isn't by happenstance. It's designed to make you grab and pull and pay for products that were never on your initial list of I need to get. And yeah. just them being placed there, just be them being you being aware of them there makes it possible that you can take a bite of the apple another time. And yes, inside of the sales department, goodness. What if we took it that seriously that a person is potentially becoming another client of our organization? Let's get some of the people that can best describe what it's like doing business with us to say hello on one of those appointments, yeah. to take a court tour. Let's do the service walk and the sales walk. Let's reverse how it is that we present our yeah, yeah. gift. If the first glance we have from the store isn't them kicking a tire, but them saying, hey, something's broken. You guys said you're going to fix it for free. Is that for real? And somebody says, yes, absolutely. That's awesome. You're getting such and such upgraded. People have been so happy with this upgrade. Let me show you around a little bit while they take care of that. Let me get you your coffee. Let me show you what it is that you get with being here with us. If we were alerted to them coming to our magnificence for the first time, let's give them the experience. Let's show them what we have. And to your point, Owen, yes. You're coming in while you're coming in for this recall. Here's your coupon for your oil change because you're going to have to do that. And even if you don't yeah. come get it during the time that you're here, you got the coupon. We want to see you again. We want to be givers. And that's the, the shift that has to happen inside of our industry is that the consumer has to recognize they get more with us. They get more because they're engulfed inside of our actual flow rather than being another transaction that might be a little bit cheaper but is cheaper it's cheaper in relationship those show me your richest person will show you the ones with the most rich relationships quick question do you know what smart pixel 2.0 location iq and audience iq have in common you know i do they are solutions that our friends and proud sponsors m1 data and analytics are brewing for automotive and beyond once again you're right my friend <laughs> And we want to invite all of our audience to go to m1-data.com to see how they can help propel your business forward with the right data insight. Go check them out at m1-data.com. Let's brew. Come on now. Back to the show. And those are, that really is what a customer does want. We all want it. We're all still customers first, right? Well, go ahead. It's, a, it's a fine line, too, because you have to take them off the recall because into other areas of the business because the challenge is if it's already a not a great situation for the customer and honestly i think it's also we're looking at this as an opportunity and how much dealerships can additionally make additional revenue and things like that but it is a fine line because you don't want to be known i hate to throw kia out there but what is kia known for right now you start becoming that kind of a company where it's like oh every time i think of that brand all i think about is that issue that's gone global i think a couple things have to happen there you have to be forthright with the customer. You have to be upfront. You got to make sure they understand that this is something that is going to, once we get this done, this vehicle is still going to be the reason why you bought it. And then ultimately to your point, dealerships look at that ABC or Mr. Jones on the name of the business as that brand. So let's take their mind off of the recall that's being done and let's get them involved with other areas of the store. And so that way it's a positioning, I think, yeah opportunity for you as well while you're still doing that recall because the last thing you want them to do is sit there and watch them with your car up on the the lift and watch them pulling that thing out and working on it you know what i mean like it's just constant yeah. reinforcement on gotta hate this vehicle it just always has problems and i gotta <laughs> recall it. let's move them away from that and let's by the end of it like, hey we took care of that look at that's that beautiful brand new vehicle that you bought six months ago that you you know, fell in love with and now you've gotten a whole nother aspect of what our dealership can bring you not only from a service standpoint but someone said there someone brought it up there what happens when it becomes another opportunity to sell a car right now you want to be that answer for them 
And that's right. exactly the cycle that we're looking for. And that's what these recalls can do for you all dealers and for you sales pros and for you service reps, everybody. This is a great, great opportunity to build more relationships. When you're putting the relationships above your revenue, you're always going to do way better than everyone around you. If you put people over your over your profits, I'm telling you, the profits will come. They just do. If you just it's but it's everybody doing it together, right? It's everybody making sure that they don't just come in for a recall, we fix it, that we're giving them service while they're there, that we're going to that next level, showing yeah. them why we believe our service department is the best in the area or whatever we want to say that it is, right? Be that and just be that, be that dealer, be that person who's out there giving people what they need, and that's help. And when you yeah. can help people, they're going to come to you when it's time for them to, when they need the help and they don't need to ask, they just want to ask for it. And so they're just being told to come get it. So I love this conversation, friends and family and everyone out there, solutionaries. This has been a great one today. Steven, you've crushed it today with this recall stuff. Thanks, man. Obviously, you know what you're talking about. We appreciate you sharing that with our network. I know Owen was super excited to have you on the show and I see why now. And I can't wait to see what else happens. You're going to be at NADA? Um. Still planning. <laughs> the plan is yes, no booth, but I'll be there. Yeah. What's the easiest way for everybody to get a hold of you? I got your website running at the bottom. Yeah. Have yeah. Time. Yeah. Either that or you ping me on my mobile. It's 512 663 4544. So, yeah. Pick up Thank the you. phone, Pick folks. Reach out phone. to him. He's happy to help. He has solutions yeah. for you and your recalls. I'm telling you. It'll make all the difference. It'll build better relationships inside your store and it'll keep your people busy and opportunities for them. So it's yeah. all a big giant life cycle. I love it. Owen, do you have anything else for Steven before we get ready to forgive focus fly out of here? Yeah, nothing really. Just a yeah, great conversation today, obviously. Getting into the trenches. We talked prior to jumping on here that we could sit here and talk about a lot of these different profit centers and, and different areas of the, of the fixed operations departments for hours, right? And unfortunately you have to, <laughs> thanks Jason, you have to look at recalls as just that, an opportunity to not only gain revenue today, which obviously is good because the OEM is covering that, but how do you use it to advance your mission with your customers through regular maintenance, through that next vehicle purchase, things like that. And I think that's the part that's tough for some, so especially on the service side, we're so busy. We don't think like that, right? Service the marketers are not, or service department and service directors are not necessarily marketers and, and that type of thing. So bring in your, your digital team, bring in your agency, bring in your marketing team and say, hey, I've got this little niche thing going on right now. It's not positive. I'm gonna spin it, turn it so it's positive. But what else can I do off it? Let's get everybody in the room talking and let's come up with some really yeah. solid strategies that are going to help like compound on top of each other. And I think that's the thing I like to really think about outside the box on when I'm working on stuff like this. And uh, Steven's been a great partner of ours. We really love that uh, he brings us a lot of great data when it comes to which vehicles out there have recalls and things like that. And uh, I know he's a growing company, so I wanted to make sure that we gave him a little uh, little highlight today. And uh, I knew Steve would come with some great info, and I think he did. So with that, Steve, thank you so much. Uh, any yeah. last thoughts you. on your end? Sorry, sir. Yeah, no, I would say, like I said earlier, even if you don't use us, start thinking about it and come up with a process at the store of how you help customers get recalls fixed. Yeah. Well, Stephen, there's uh, not too often on the Fixed Ops Friday have we had some announcement of our validity to what it is that you're bringing to the industry but we're going to have to go ahead and drop out there that dealer recall solutions is 100 percent cgc approved all right everybody <laughs> now go ahead and give him a shout let him know Thanks, uh, services that you need help at but steven it is a conversation that can continue to go on the concept behind why it is so important that we do this is critical. Thank you so much. What's going on, Eric, Eric Hinkle? Hinkle? Good What's to up, see bro? you, brother. Good, Good to see, to see you, Jason. Happy that Appreciate everybody has been joining up, us in here. This has been the first Fixed Ops Friday for the year 2024, wow. and we are excited to bring you a whole lot more. We are pumped up to be part of the solution here in the industry, especially inside of this Fixed Ops niche, folks. There is so much to learn, so much growing to do. And inside of that, we got to drop those F bombs so we can keep doing it too. Hey, real quick, guys, real quick. Special edition next week, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. The NADA, all my new friends at Trade Pending is going to be joining us. So I'm super excited to. Big show, big show. 26. Yeah. Be looking for it. I'll be having a promo come out on the next yeah, couple of days. Yeah. It's going to be an amazing show. We're going to be talking about yes. what to do, what to see, and what's happening what's at NADA, right? what's happening with trade pending right now, because there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm excited to have them on the show, too, because I'm telling you, 
the, the buzz about what's happening with the with all of the companies just combining to form Voltron. I'm telling you, I love it. So it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Can't wait. Yes, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. Oh, I think everybody on this show next week has not been on the show on a, the show before. So uh, super excited for that. Yes, I did. I thought I'd give my ourselves a shameless plug there. So yeah. <laughs> shame here. Yeah, no shame we won't. on we won't our plug, show. Plug city. Yeah. We got all kinds of outlets to keep plugging. We are excited to do what it is that we do. But let's get ready to forgive Focus Fly, everybody. Thank all you, right. so Brian Ortega. We see you out there, brother. Thank you for jumping in, and everybody else. That is Bruin Solutions with us. Let's forget Focus Fly. So, Stephen, go ahead and help us out. Hands on the shoulders. On Here three. One, two, three. Forget. Forget. Focus. Focus. Right. Oh. Fly. fly. And, and keep, keep growing. growing. Keep growing. That's right, everybody. Right. Ramirez, the car guy. And I'm Frelin Arts, subprime hero. And you've been Bruin Solutions on the Car Guy Coffee Podcast for Fixed Ops Friday. Friday. With the one, the only... Owen Moon and our special guest, Steven Ranger. That's right, everybody. We will see you soon. We're out. Peace.